Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, video tutorial. Uh, this video will be over uh, thin film interference. Um, again, with kind of like the uh, single and double slit interference, uh, you don't see too many multiple choice problems over this subject. Again, that can change depending on what they select for their free response, but you generally see more free responses dealing with thin film interference. So what's, what's useful to know here with these types of problems is when you encounter a phase shift. Um, and so let's get ourselves a thin film going on here. Let's say that, again, our light is coming in uh, perpendicularly, and so I've got an incident wave coming in like this. Now, let's say that uh, the medium that I am coming from is air, and I'm go let's say I'm working with a soap bubble here, and so I'm going into soap. Um, again, air's index refraction is one, and then soap has an index refraction, let's just say 1.3, and then air is inside the bubble again, so I've got an N equals one. So I'm going from low to high, and then, in this pattern, I'm going from high to low. Now, when you have a phase shift, low to high is the only time that you have a 100 degree or a half cycle, half wavelength phase shift. When you're going from, not height, when you're going from high to low, there is no phase shift. Okay, so we see here that, yes, when that light is reflected off, it will be shifted. When the light comes in and reflects again, it will not be shifted. Now, how far does that light travel? That, that extra path distance here, we're going to call that 2T which uh, stands for the thickness of that slope, soap bubble because it comes in T, and then it comes out, T. So, when we are dealing with this, and we are going from low to high, high to low, in other words, we've got a thin film with two indexes surrounding it. We've got basically a low index sandwich going on. The lower indexes are on the outside. Then for constructive interference, constructive in other words, where we would see brightness. Constructive interference occurs at m plus one-half times our wavelength in the film. That is so crucial. So with these types of problems, most of the time, they're going to utilize the fact that the frequency does not change. And so they're going to make you calculate the frequency, or excuse me, the wavelength in the film. Well, if you know the frequency, you can calculate the velocity, and you know from there you can calculate your wavelength. Um, again, this is for constructive interference when you've got the low index sandwich. Destructive interference for this problem, in other words, where you wouldn't see anything, you would see a soap, soap bubble that would appear black, would be 2t equals m times my wavelength in the film. Now, let's talk about this m. This m is my order of refraction. And so it has to be a whole number. And generally, like for this problem, if they wanted to know the minimum thickness, you would plug in m as 1 if you wanted darkness. Okay, so minimum thickness here occurs at m as 1. Minimum thickness here occurs when m is 0. Now, that is for this type of problem when you've got constructive and destructive interference. Now, if we have a film where we are moving from air and then we're going into soap and then we're going into glass. Okay, so here my index of refraction is 1.3, here n is 1, and here n is 1.5. Well, here I'm going from low to high, but here I'm going from low to high. So, 
there is a phase shift here and there is another phase shift here. Well, for this type of problem, you flip your equations. In other words, constructive interference occurs at 2t equals m again times my wavelength in the film and here you plug in or excuse me you plug in uh, 1 and for destructive interference destructive b whew, you uh, have 2t m plus 1 half times my wavelength and again that's in the film and here you can plug in 0 so you see how here we go low to high, low to high. You have 2t equals m lambda n because you have a phase shift going on here and you also have another phase shift going on here. They both shift. Okay? And again, the extra path distance is 2t. And so with these type of, types of problems, they may start you with this film and then add or change one of the mediums. And then you have to realize, okay, where do I have a shift? Where don't I have a shift? Um, again, you'll need to know how to calculate the wavelength inside the film. So if you know these two indices of refraction, you can calculate the velocities and from there you can calculate your wavelength. Um, so, uh, those are the types of problems that you can expect within film. Again, know qualitative as well as quantitative. Know how to work with numbers as well as working with, okay, what if we, um, what if we knew the thickness and I want to know what wavelength to expect brightness, stuff like that. They can always change it on you. Um, so that's that and good luck.